Hi, um, I'm Pete Gerlach, and I want to add to a video that I've uploaded recently to YouTube, uh, which is a perspective on trying to uh, break bad habits. I want to add to that in this video, and I want to draw on 31 years of being a family therapist and um, someone who helps people recover from early childhood trauma. Um, the basic premise that I've come to believe in, as many of my videos and articles in my nonprofit website indicate, is that when very young children, meaning age zero through six, are traumatized, meaning they experience sig significant parental abuse abandonment or neglect. They adapt, they survive by forming what can be called psychological wounds. Unless someone spots these wounds and helps correct them, such children grow into adults with significant psychological wounds. There are six of them. See my lesson one videos to learn more about that if you don't know it yet. So Grown, wounded children, adults with psychological wounds, often have to combat significant inner pain. Shame, guilt, fear, confusion, um, a number of very unpleasant emotions that are recurring and chronic. Some people, some such people, are fortunate because they, quote, hit bottom. Notice your reaction to that phrase. I suspect you've heard it before. Oh, she or he is hit bottom, or is hitting bottom. Pause for a minute and think, what does that phrase mean to you? How would you describe hitting bottom to, say, an 11-year-old who asks you, what, what does that mean? They fall on the ground? No. So keep your definition of hitting bottom in mind as you consider uh, some perspective I want to offer on this. Um, in order to make permanent change, in my opinion as a veteran therapist, people need to hit bottom. That's a metaphor for reaching an experiential point in life at some time for some reason where your attitudes and your values shift significantly, causing a shift in your behavior. That's what I mean by hitting bottom. There are two ways to do this. Now, you already know this. Um, one is gradually. Wounded people who carry a great deal of inner pain accumulate weariness, hopelessness, the pain may escalate, their attempts to reduce the pain fail, and over time their inner discontent grows, and one day they reach a tipping point. I remember attending a meeting where a man was describing his own change, and he told the rest of us, he said, I woke up one morning and I realized my life was gray. And everybody in the audience nodded. We had been there, many of us. So. One way of hitting true bottom is to accumulate weariness, hopelessness, um, and pain. The second of two ways to hit bottom is suddenly. Have you ever known anybody that committed something that was so awful they ran over the neighbor's dog or child? Um, they pushed someone downstairs and they died. They embezzled funds and were jailed. They committed some kind of a crime and were publicly humiliated. If you know somebody that had some kind of traumatic life experience, a DUI, drunk and driving under the influence of alcohol. Um, if you know anybody that has had a profound, painful, one-time experience that caused them to change their attitudes and their behavior, ever after. Do you know anybody like that? Could that be you? That's the second of two ways that people hit true bottom. 
What do I, why do I keep saying true bottom? There is such a thing as false bottom. That's a metaphor for believing that you are going to change, making your mind up and making an attempt to change. I am going to stop eating fat. No more saturated fat for me. And then some period of time later, you revert, or to use the 12-step phrase, you relapse. So there are attempts to hit bottom, which are well meant and sincere at the time, and there are successful hitting bottom, which I mean as true bottom. True bottom means you really do permanently change your values, your attitudes, and some behaviors. False bottom, or trial bottom, is you change for a while and then you go back or relapse or revert. Why is this? My work with personality subcells offers a credible explanation. Um, I propose that your personality as a normal, healthy person is composed of subcells. These are like members of a sports team or an orchestra. Each part of your personality is a specialist and brings you a certain talent and some limitations and a unique view of the world. Your subcells see the world differently from each other. They cause different reactions in you. They react to different things. So they're semi-independent and they affect each other. They affect your hormones, your thoughts, your muscles, and your body. When you have one or more subcells that say, okay, we are going to lose 30 pounds. And you start to do that. You change your eating habits, you change your values, and you're partially successful. And then guess what? You revert and the pounds come back. That is because I propose that you have another group of subcells that say, no, 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 no. We will not stop reducing our inner pain by not eating fat because fat makes us feel better. Or starch or carbohydrates or comfort foods. It really makes us feel better because it changes our brain chemistry and our hurt and anger and hopelessness and despair and guilt and shame are muffled for the time being. We manage our inner pain by eating too much or certain things. And so you've got one group of subcells that say, we've got to change. And another group of subcells say, no, 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 we're not going to. And there's this great inner conflict that goes on. Are you familiar with that? <clears throat> one of two things happens, depending on many factors. Either the pro-change subcells win, and you really do make permanent change, or the don't change some cells are uh, predominate and are patient and keep hounding you saying don't change don't change we won't change and they win and you relapse does this make sense does it match your life experience if it does the question that comes up is well what can we do about this we all have bad habits, minor to major. If we need to change something, an attitude or a behavior, and we got these subcells, what do we do? Here's what you do. Study lesson one in my nonprofit educational website and these related videos. They will explain more about your amazing, talented personality subcells and who leads them and more importantly, if you want to shift your subcells, retrain them, reorganize them, so that they follow the wisdom of your true self and other executive subcells, if you want to change your subcells, study lesson one and these videos and learn how to change the balance between change and don't change to change, oh, okay, we won't change. People do hit true bottom, either gradually or suddenly. If you need to change a major unhealthy 
or pain provoking habit or behavior, you can't will yourself to hit bottom. It's not an intellectual possibility any more than you can talk an addict out of their behavior. Can't do it because their pain protecting sub cells are too strong. What you can do is get to know and respectfully, patiently retrain your sub cells and then they will change. I've been doing this parts work therapy, working with people's sub cells for 19 years. I've worked with my own sub cells. I'm a true believer now. Many people are able to make major healthy changes by uh, working with their sub cells or personality parts. Notice your reaction to what you just heard. If you want to find out more, one more time, I invite you to study the videos relating to lesson one. It's all about personality subcells, psychological wounds, and recovery. Thanks for watching.